Today I have traveled up to Mountain Brook, Alabama. Mountain Brook is a suburb of Birmingham, one of our largest cities, and today I am going to be doing a true crime story. We're going to be checking out some of the locations and I'm going to be telling the story of a local police officer who shot and killed his wife of not even two years. This is the story of what happened to Megan Montgomery. <music> Megan Louise Montgomery, she grew up here in Alabama, right here near Birmingham. At the time of our story that we're going to be talking about today, she had just entered her 30s. She had a master's degree in communications management and she volunteered tirelessly at the Birmingham Humane Shelter. Just, I mean, she loved taking care of animals. That's what made her happy. She loved every minute of it. Before all of this in today's story happened though, Megan had graduated from John Carroll Catholic High School here near Birmingham. She graduated with honors. She had the opportunity to travel all around the country with her father, Johnny Iron Man Montgomery. And uh, he got his nickname Iron Man because he was an eight time finisher of the Triathlon World Championships, which I have to say is pretty impressive. Megan then went on to marry her first husband. His name was Chris Sykes. And uh, Megan, Chris, and Megan's father, Johnny, all appeared in an episode of HGTV's House Hunters. It was like season 118 or something like that. It, it was called Style Clash in Birmingham. I'm Megan, I'm 27, and I'm a program director for the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Chris, also 27, is a former Marine. Now he too works at the University of Alabama. Johnny Iron Man, uh, he's now a prominent real estate agent in the Birmingham area, and that's how he made it onto the show. He was their real estate agent, and they even discussed that openly in that episode that he was her father and their real estate agents. So our agent is actually my dad, Johnny. My name is Johnny Iron Man Montgomery. I'm an eight-time finisher of the Iron Man Triathlon on the Big Island of Hawaii. Unfortunately, uh, Megan and Chris's marriage, it only lasted a couple of years before they decided that they were just better off being friends and they separated. They sold off their home that they had purchased on the TV show and went their own separate directions. Now, Megan, after the divorce, she immersed herself in to her volunteering and trying to save animals. While at the same time doing that, she made the decision to change her lifestyle up. So she started going to a gym frequently and she started eating healthy and she went through her own positive transformation that gave her a ton of self-confidence. Because she was now proud of herself, Megan started posting like bikini pictures and stuff on Instagram. Those were things that she had never done before. She was happy, she was healthy, and she was looking forward to her future. In July of 2017, Megan met 43-year-old police officer Jason Bragg McIntosh. At this point, Megan would have been about 29-ish. And then her and 43-year-old police officer, Jason McIntosh, they started dating. At first, things were great. They were happy, and, and Jason was loving, and, you know, it, like any fresh relationship, things were perfect. Megan loved every minute of it. So, after only about six months of dating, Jason popped the question, and Megan said yes and they got married. Over the next year, things quickly escalated. They changed from happy, giddy, and bubbly to a relationship that was very toxic and volatile. They argued regularly, and there were even several times Megan had to 
call her mom or some friends to come pick her up because Jason had just left her stranded in a you know a parking lot somewhere like Walmart or places like that a restaurant because they had gotten into an argument and he just left her on February the 23rd of 2019 the volatility of their relationship escalated in a big way on February 23rd, Hoover police responded to Village Center Street in the Ross Bridge community. They found a 31 year old woman shot in the arm. That February the 23rd, it was Jason, not Megan, who called 911. Jason called and he reported that he and Megan were here at their home. I am in the Ross Bridge community of Hoover, Alabama, which is all part of Birmingham. And uh, Jason reported that he and Megan, they were here at their home fighting, having an argument. When Megan went and grabbed Jason's service weapon, she was trying to protect herself. She was in fear of and thought that maybe she could use it to get him to, to back off. So Megan grabs it. They struggle over it for a minute and it went off and struck Megan in her right arm. Responding police officers quickly suspected that there was more to the story. As it usually is in domestic violence type situations, all the neighbors here in this community, they all heard Megan and Jason fighting regularly. They pretty much all knew what was going on and they told that to the officers who were investigating the shooting. The neighbors all reported they thought Jason was abusive, but they weren't sure they've never seen him hurt her but they heard them screaming and fighting often. But as it was, Megan was swearing up and down that it was her fault that this happened, that she was the one that grabbed the gun and she was the reason the gun went off. It was her fault she had gotten shot. She swore. Because of that, no one was charged in this instance. But because Jason was a police officer, automatically a detective with the Alabama Law Enforcement Agency was assigned to this case to investigate it. It's just standard procedure in the state of Alabama for all police officers who are involved in something like this. The Alabama Law Enforcement Agency investigator took Jason's gun as evidence and then he sat down with Megan for an interview. Megan still claimed that the whole incident was an accident but she did tell that investigator that she was afraid of Jason the investigator also discovered that when the hospital staff asked Megan about the shooting she told them he shot me now while this whole investigation was going on Megan did the right thing here she moved out and separated from Jason. She moved in with her parents and she filed for a protection order against him. Now, despite a judge approving the, the order of protection, Jason just kept showing up everywhere Megan was and they kept getting into arguments all the time. On May the 5th of 2019, Megan called 911 and reported that Jason had tackled her to the ground and she had visible bruising on her ribs. The police came out to investigate and Jason McIntosh was arrested that night for domestic violence. But he was released the very next morning on bail. The next day after he bailed out of jail, he resigned from the Hoover Police Department. Megan again after this incident, she did the right thing she already had the order of protection and he wasn't following it so now she files for divorce after filing for divorce things seemed to turn around for megan she started going to counseling and she was becoming happy and bubbly again she even began to share some of her experiences to hopefully help other women down the road she made one post where she described even before their wedding, before they got married, that Jason had threw her up against the wall and choked her. She wanted to hopefully stop 
domestic violence from happening to other people. In September of 2019, she was finally stable enough to move out of her parents' home and she got her own apartment. It was all looking up for her. Her future was uh, looking like things were turning around and going in the right direction. Meanwhile, Jason was spiraling downhill. He had started repeatedly texting that Alabama law enforcement agency investigator asking for his firearm back. The, his, this particular firearm, it was his duty weapon, but it was not issued by the Hoover Police Department. It was his, he owned it, it was his own property, and he wanted it back. He told that investigator that he needed it back because he was getting a security job, an armed security job, and he had to have it for a said job. It took about a month of Jason badgering the investigator, and despite there being an open domestic violence case against him, the investigator agreed to give him his gun back. On November the 15th of 2019, Jason met with that ALE, ALEA investigator right here in front of the local Alabama Enforcement Agency office and pretty much just handed it back to him. 15 days later, right here at this oyster bar, Megan was here with her friends watching the Iron Bowl, which is a big thing every year. It's Alabama versus Auburn is massive. The whole state shuts down for it. And Megan was here at this oyster bar watching the game with her friends when all of a sudden Jason walks in. He walks right up behind Megan, taps her on the shoulder, and then puts his hand on the back of her neck, you know, like kind of putting a little pressure, squeezing and tells her that she needs to come outside and talk now. Megan's friends who were all there with him look at him with a look of disgust on their faces and they ask, who are you? Well, Jason replied, this is my wife and she's going with me. Now, Megan agreed to go with him, but her friends say that the fright that was in her eyes is something that they would never ever forget. The next morning at about 4 30 a.m. a police officer that was patrolling his area he came right here to this parking lot where I'm at to make sure no one was up to no good. Now I am standing in the Mountain Brook High School athletic complex. Uh, there's some kind of sporting field over here maybe baseball you can see the yellow goal post in front of us there football and over here is tennis I and mean, just all kind of sports go on here and he but the, the officer was here he pulled into the parking lot uh, just making sure no one was up to no good as the officer was riding around the perimeter of the parking lot he noticed something laying out here right in the middle so he pulls over to it and he stumbles across a person laying on the ground right here. It was Megan Montgomery. As the officer gets out to check on her, he notices that Megan Louise Montgomery had been shot three times and was deceased. The police department immediately issued an arrest warrant for their former colleague, Jason McIntosh. The warrant said that they believe Jason McIntosh caused the death of Megan Montgomery during the time of an act of protective order. Now, that order of protection that the judge signed, th them having that in place, allowed the police officers to charge Jason with capital murder, which could ultimately get him the death penalty. The Mountain Brook PD put uh, some heat on Jason, and the very next day after the police found Megan's body here in this parking lot, Jason McIntosh turned himself in to the Mountain Brook Police Department, and he was officially 
in custody and charged with Megan's murder. Um, and an unfortunate series of, uh, of timing, I guess, would be the way to describe it. That same day that Jason turned himself in, the day after Megan's body was discovered here on, in this, right here behind me, Megan received a letter at her parents' house from the Mountain Brook courts telling her that she needed to show up the very next day, the day that Jason would turn himself in, to testify against him in their open domestic violence case. Had that letter came two days earlier, he would have been in jail, more than likely, the day of her murder, and it would have never happened. Two days earlier. On March the 31st of this year, 2021, Jason McIntosh took a plea deal and pled guilty to the reduced charge of just murder, not capital murder. He was sentenced to 30 years in prison, but he is eligible for parole under the terms of his plea deal after 15 years. After all of the details were made public of this case, the Alabama Law Enforcement Agency received a massive backlash over returning that firearm to Jason McIntosh. Had they, obviously, had they not done it, Megan would still be alive, more than likely. They quickly responded to that backlash, saying that had they not given it back, Jason could have just easily gone and purchased a new firearm, which is true, he could have. Now, this, that, that whole ordeal over the firearm has led many people to believe that because he was a police officer, he got some kind of special treatment, which is something that would not have taken place had it been you or I. And pretty much you guys are just going to have to form your own opinion there as to whether or not he should, he should or should not have gotten it back or whether he received special treatment. Before Jason accepted that plea deal, Detectives also dug up a 13-minute recording of Jason McIntosh where he openly talked about having an unusual fascination with serial killers and how thinking of some of the mass shootings that have taken place in our country like Columbine and the, the Parkland shootings and all that stuff helped him sleep at night. He thought of those mass shootings to help him go to bed at night, which is really wild. Also on that 13 minute tape, he tells Megan that he wanted to beat her to death with a tennis racket. Listen, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. It's, it's wild. The dude had some crazy, demented thoughts. It turns out that this 13-minute tape had been recorded by Megan just before that initial shooting where she was shot in her arm. She recorded him on this tyrant, and it was on her phone, and the as the police were doing their investigation into her death, they found it. Ultimately, they, uh, you know, presented to Jason that they had this 13 minute footage and that's why he took the plea deal because he knew that they had this tape and if they played it for a jury he was going to get the death penalty no doubt the whole ordeal them is just a horrific example of domestic violence the fact that Jason McIntosh was abusive to Megan and she was you know beaten and shot and then killed ultimately is it's it's a horrific turn of events and uh, after all of it was said and done Megan's parents started the Megan Montgomery domestic violence prevention fund where they raise and donate money to domestic violence support groups. And I just want to say right now, if any of you watching this 
is in some kind of abusive relationship, no matter what is happening, there is help for you out there. There are phone numbers you can call. There are places on the internet you can go. The best bet for survival are to get out of those situations before they escalate. There's help out there. There, there is. That is going to do it for this episode today here in Mountain Brook, Alabama, right outside of Birmingham, and the horrible, horrible story of Megan Montgomery, murdered by her former police officer husband. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you're new here, go down, hit that subscribe button, then hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a video. If you want to help support the channel, check out the links down in the description box below. It's always much appreciated. Thank you all. I will see you again tomorrow. Please stay safe and stay healthy. Much love to you all.